Good afternoon, everyone. Take notice of a special, a regular call meeting of the City of Council of the City of Hidalgo, Texas, on the 17th date of September 2018. Call to order. Item number two, invocation and pledge of allegiance. Yes, sir. If I could remain standing, please. Heavenly Father, we ask that you uh, guide this council in making the best possible decisions for the citizens of this great city of Hidalgo. And we also ask that you uh, guide our staff in giving them the knowledge and the materials to work in doing their day to day jobs that they've been doing for since I've been here. And we want to thank all of our employees who are on alert throughout last week when we had uh, warnings of possible storms. So on behalf of the city council, we wanna thank you for making everything allowable to us to make everyone do their job diligently in your name. Item number three, public comments. Item number four, consideration and action on approval of August 14, 2018 and September 6, 2018 minutes. Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Trevino. Second. Mayor, Second. for the record, I just have one correction on the minutes. Okay. Instead of the uh, 10th Street on the uh, item where we discussed the uh, 10th Street project that TxDOT is going to be doing with the uh, uh, connector bridge, okay. it says International Bridge and it should read Corridor 281 10th Bridge. All right. That is the only correction. I have a motion by Mr. Trevino, second by Mr. Sanchez. All those in favor with the corrections? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item number five, consideration and action on Texas Mun Municipal League uh, Risk Pool Board of Trustees. If you go to number five, I'm not sure if you... Yes, uh, Mayor and members of the City Council, we have place 11, place 12, 13, 14, and uh, it's one item for each place that the uh, city is allowed or if it wishes to uh, cast a vote for. Okay, for place 11, my recommendation is to go with Randy Criswell unless you have um, mm -hmm. another option. So we go motion with one, one by one? We can or? do one by one or all, all three. Do we have consensus on Criswell? Yes. Okay. For place 12, the recommendation is to go with Bert Lumbreras. Yes. Consensus? Okay. Yes. Yes. That, that was the guy that you. Yes. Okay. For place 13, Mike Jones. We just have two there unless we want to go with Mr. Black. Mike Jones? Mike Jones. Yes. And then for place 14, we have three options there. Any relatives? Any Hidalgo? Harris or Rutledge? I know, right? We go with Harris. Good. Okay, so before we do the motion, we have for place 11, Randy Criswell, place 12, Bert Lumbreras, place 13, Mike Jones, 
and place 14, David Harris. Do I have a motion? Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Trevino, second by Ms. Ayala. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We will bring back the results of the uh, outcome to the council just for FYI. All right, perfect. Item number six, discussion and action on presentation of land and uh, leisure sure. in reference to water park feasibility study. Mr. Trevino. Yes, thank you, Mayor and City Council members. Um, I'm here to present a, an item that was passed by my, uh, by the EDC board in my last meeting. It's a, uh, a feasibility study for a uh, water park here in, in Hidalgo. Um, I have an investor that's wanting to us for us to participate in a feasibility study. Um, uh, the proposed site, the feasibility study is going to cost us $17,500, uh, $17,500, and uh, his participation in this study is $5,500. We at the EDC will be uh, pitching in $12,000 for the feasibility study. Um, he would be paying for the first payment, which is uh, 5500 to start the feasibility study. So he's very interested in, in uh, getting the study done to, uh, for, us to consider, for us to consider one of our city sites as a possible location for a, uh, for a water park. Can you switch it? The possible locations that we're looking at is in front of the arena, which is five acres, and then the two acres that's owned by the Harms people, the, the Mr. Fred Harms, and then the other possible location would be the 14 acres that we have behind the arena. Um, this is the type of water park that we're looking at. Something It's uh, not something that you're seeing down Jackson Street. It's more into the, uh, into the look as a Slitherbond water park. Um, can you do the panoramic? I mean the this is a water park in Baytown, Baytown, Texas. This is a view of what they have. What, uh, Does he own that one? No, this is a city-owned park, oh. city-owned water park. And I'll show you the financials because I did ask for, for public information requests from Baytown, and they sent me all their financials from 2010 to present. Uh, go down to there, go to the Lazy River. So it has that, that, that water park has different features, which is something like, like, uh, like Slither Bond. And that's, uh, go down to switch it to the flow rider. So basically you can make these water parks into anything you wanna do, depending on what the investor is, is, uh, is willing to do. He's willing to bring in 14 to $15 million into this water park, so. Switch it again, Robert, to the play structures. They have different structures on there. His partner um, out of Monterrey is the one that builds the plastic slides and uh, for the whole United States and throughout the world. So they're, they're based out of Monterrey. It's Aquaquita. Go ahead to the next slide. To the next slide. Okay. This is the public information request I requested out of Baytown Pirate Space since 2010. Their revenues are on the left side, expenses in the middle, and their net profit is on the right side. So they've been grossing a net profit since 2010. The only, the only numbers that, were in, that are in red is in 2017 when the hurricane hit. And that's why they lost money on that, on that, year, that particular year. But every year they've been, uh, They've been uh, ma uh, making a profit on, on a city-owned water park of a population of 70,000 people in their little community. Okay, go ahead and switch it. Oh, shit. 
Benefits to the community, property and sales tax, the property investment is around $15 million, which is gonna bring on an annual basis to the city of Hidalgo, around 52,000, to the school district, 191,000, and to the county, 87,000 a year in, in taxes. Estimated sales on $3 million would bring $225,000 to the city in revenue. Um, more benefits, jobs for kids during the summer. Most of these water parks are open when kids are, ha are out of school and they usually close when kids go back into school. That's why you see a lot of parks closing and opening on those certain dates. Here, I think in, in South Texas, you could probably keep these parks open on the weekends and keep them functioning until a certain day, maybe even up in, into the November days to uh, continue bringing in sales. And then the third, the third objective would be visit, it's a visitor destination. You can do swimming lessons, movies after dark, itty bitty beach party mornings for little kids where they bring in their, their toddlers to come and play. And then the special Islander celebration nights which is a night, maybe one or two nights out of the month, where you've been special, special needs kids at a, at a discounted price. And these are the, the, uh, the views of the projected park that they wanna do here in Hidalgo. It has your, I don't know if this has a pointer. Yeah, it does, but it doesn't. It has your, your beach view, your uh, what do you call it? The wave pool. It, it has a lot of slides. It has the river, the the slow river, and then the kids area. And the reason they want to do it um, in the arena area is because of the parking. The parking will really eliminate a lot of their expense. And on on, uh, I know it might be a little bit difficult when we have a uh, what do you call it? A, a show or something. But I think uh, this is something that we could entertain. Slides, wave pool, lazy river, and the flow rider in the middle. <clears throat> the capacity to the Baytown Park is 2,200 people. I did email the, the gentleman that, that's the EDC director there in, in Baytown. And he says that uh, in his email, he says the only bad part about the park is that they didn't build it big enough when they built it because it's always the capacity. Um, I was going to say, uh, normally we have Monterey Reynosa. Most of these people are coming out across the border for entertainment. They're no longer doing it in Matamoros, no in Reynosa. Right. So if we're going to look something like this, I would say it had to be enormous. Uh, for, for, for enough tourists, people to uh, for enough people to come in, because water parks are destination areas. They're not they're not things that you see on the expressway, and you all, all of a sudden you're driving down the expressway and you see, hey, let's stop at the water park, kids. You have to you have to come with your swimming trunks and everything. So it's a it's a planned trip to that particular to that particular thing. Um, they have 170 guests a year. They average 3.2 million dollars. Um, um, they opened it as, uh, and I'm, I'm not pitching it as a city project, but um, this is what uh, Baytown did. This is a private investor that's, that's willing to pump in a lot of money into the city of Hidalgo if we help them participate with a feasibility study. Um, they Dillo, operate Mr. Under, Dillo, let, let, let me ask you a question real quick. Yes, uh, sir. What would be the timeline? Feasibility study, how long would it take to do the study. The timeline it takes, I think, between two to three months. And then what the happens? Most, what yeah. happens after that? There, there. If you look at your at your the contract, um, what happens after that is that they can take this feasibility study, depending on how it comes out. If it's a good study that says the park will work and the numbers will work, then he can take it to a to his uh, banker and say. This is the first thing they're gonna ask for is a feasibility study, how it's gonna work. And then we go into how is the city gonna participate, whether with, with the property around the arena, the parking lot or what, whatever we need to do to have uh, the financing be more attractive to the banker. 
So the feasibility study is the first step in getting a loan with, uh, with a bank. Um, this particular company, Land and Leisure, they work a lot with the USDA, and that's why we're recommending the Land and Leisure LLC because they do a lot of studies. And if you look in your, in your packets there, um, you should have all their theme parks that they've, uh, that they've uh, did feasibility studies for all over the country. And the reason that they pick them is because they're USDA recommended by the USDA. So just in case he wants to get a loan through, through them or, or some type of help. But the contract, he's going to pay 5500 And his share is the, in order to start the visibility study, he's going to have to send his, his wire transfer first. And then they charge us on three other payments at up to the $12,000. This is the first time he does something with the city of Hidalgo? This is the first time he does something with the city of Hidalgo. I would say to uh, do everything possible, necessary possible, to get some of this business you know, into Hidalgo for one reason only, and that's because FAR has been working on a project um, under the radar, but it's industrial. and. I believe it's gonna impact, you know, the the it's area, like our area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I I would say for us to take the first initiative to to get one of these parks, you know, to at least would get all the people to come into it. I look for recreational. It would it, it it's it's it adds to Hidalgo. It adds to the State Farm Marina. Right. It's going to add uh, another piece of the puzzle for us to attract more people to the city of Hidalgo. Um, it's a major, major project if, if, it co if the study comes through. It might come back that it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to have good numbers. But if it comes back where it's going to say that it, it can be done, you know, it, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll happen, you know, here in the city of Hidalgo. As part of the feasibility studies, the number of people that come from Mexico, can that be part of the formula? That's going to be part of yeah. the formula, yeah. Yeah, people coming through the through the bridge, through the bridge, and all that is going to be part of the formula. It's going to be a uh, uh, a study on how how much time it gets to drive to the city of Hidalgo, whether you live in Harlingen or whether you live in Weslaco or Mercedes. People don't people don't. The way I look at it is, how many times have we been to Slitherbond? I mean, not very many because it's pretty far away. And I think there's, uh, and plus the cost is, 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 is tremendous. This type of park, the cost is not going to be there. They're going to be offering uh, citizens from Hidalgo season passes at a discounted rate. We're going to give jobs to all the high schoolers that are here. They're going to be trained as lifeguards, and they're going to have uh, jobs and concessions, management, maintenance. All those things are going to happen. Have we asked for any feasibility um you said you got public uh, requests from Baytown. Yeah. Can we get public requests from any any other water park here in the valley? Um, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna they're gonna do the, through the. So we we can't call we can't public request uh, from oh, from, uh, from, the from city of or, you know. No Slitterbaum. Uh, no, that's a private company. You can't get public requests from a private company. Those are private entities. But the city of Far has one, no? They have a small, they small have a little park. Small one. Small yeah. Just check it out to see how much they charge, or is it like? Yeah, they charge. That's city-owned. That's it's city, -owned. That's it's city -owned. owned. The Far one. Awesome. It's an auditorium, uh, mayor and uh, mayor pro tem council members. Uh, and when they built that auditorium, the uh, covered pool, and they have some water features outside, some slides and some other. Did La Jolla just built it? <laughs> <laughs> La Jolla ISD. Yeah. La Jolla. The school district. The school district. Well, well, school district. Have, uh, it was the uh, privately owned uh, golf course that was out there. And they bought that golf course and the surrounding properties and built a, uh, a uh, water, water park facility, which includes an auditorium and uh, some other uh, facilities as well. Good Mayor, question. Mr. Gonzalez, I think, you know, overall we've lost, a, been now run and lost a lot of uh, uh, business to our neighbors. It's time mm -hmm. for us to Hidalgo really start, you know, going 
aggressively after this kind of businesses. I mean, this is this is what we actually want, not because of the, the water park, but because of the amount of people this that park attracts. Yeah, yeah the that's, the that's the Baytown water park was was initially done with bonds, which is the way we did the arena. Um, but right now it's 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 with bonds and some hotel taxes but right now it's being operated as um it operate it, it operates it with an enterprise fund and you know they're paying their their capital their their debt by with with their profits so i mean it's it's a good it's a in their particular case it it's been very successful you know the, the guy wrote in his email you know that you know the only bad thing about the park is that um, there was two bad things that they didn't build a park big enough and then the the system that they were using to clean the water um, wasn't the wasn't a good system so they switched the system so that was a another expense that they had to do and now they don't have any problems with uh, you know how clean the water is when it's going through through the the, the whole tubing and Mayor, stuff like make that. a motion I have a motion by mr. France second by mr. Trevino all those in favor uh, Aye. And just a reminder, sir, uh, gentlemen, that is the we have a city commercial property tour, our first property tour tomorrow, and hope to see you all there, nine o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Trevino. Item number seven: discussion and action on draft preferred provider agreement for emergency air medical services. Mayor, members of city council, Chief Rojas is going to introduce some uh, guests that are here from the uh, Air Methods uh, Company. Of course, sir. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. I'm here to present uh, Mr. Longoria, Rolando Longoria. He's just, uh, in charge of the Air Med, his uh, Air uh, and Medical Service. Uh, he want to be presenting a uh, presentation about the company, and he's uh, asking for uh, the City of Hidalgo support to bring uh, this company up and running. Mr. Longoria. Good evening. My name is Roland Longoria. I'm the uh, clinical based lead out of Laredo uh, for Air Methods. Uh, we are the largest air medical provider out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, we started this whole process in trying to bring an aircraft to the Rio Grande Valley uh, about October of last year. And the way that it works with Air Methods, being very conservative as we are, uh, trying to garner support. And we're trying to garner support not only from the local fire departments, but from the local EMS. Uh, sheriff's departments in, in, in and around the area, the hospitals and that kind of stuff. Um, in the packets in front of you is just some basic information about the education that we offer, uh, blood, uh, now we're carrying blood in our aircrafts. Uh, in the back portion is the patient advocacy. There's a lot of conversation out there and you know, what is the need and feasibility of a aircraft when it comes to helicopter EMS. And that's kind of where we're trying to take that charge. Um, Air Methods has been doing this for a very long time. Uh, they took over San Antonio Air Life in October 2015, and uh, that has allowed us the expansion. So the South Texas aircraft still doesn't have a name yet. That's kind of what we're trying to do is garner the support. The uh, agreement that we have in, or are asking to get signed to garner the support from the fire department uh, is so that we could present to our board in Denver uh, that we can mul uh, move that multi-million dollar aircraft and open up operations here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, we, the agreement is amendable. Uh, we are solely just trying to figure out what are the needs of different departments, different EMS agencies in and around the Rio Grande Valley. And, um, you know, again, trying to see if we can garner that support so that we can take it back to Denver and show them that South Texas has a need. Um, again, with our population growth, the, you know, expansion of medical care in the Rio Grande Valley is huge. And I th truly believe uh, bringing th this asset here will be huge for us because, again, currently have one don't know what's going to happen with them. Uh, my intent is to bring uh, rapid critical care to the Rio Grande Valley. Um, you know, I moved away to go work with San Antonio Air Life, and now that we've expanded, this opportunity has come up to come back home. I've moved back home, and I can be more ecstatic to have this opportunity. So, um, do you all have any questions for us? Is there any charge? 
So the bill itself, again, uh, we are currently outside of network on some insurances. We are currently actually worked on a phone call this morning with United Healthcare. So we're going to be trying to get in network with most of, most of these agencies. We offer ship, we offer our memberships. For, uh, we're a preferred provider with this, uh, Massa. I believe the city of Hidalgo, I believe, is in negotiations currently with them or some something with that regard. Um, and what we're trying to do is really, again, the, per the patient advocacy towards those last two pages is what we're truly trying to get to. Um, a lot of these patients that are flown, again, we want to make sure that, again, if we fly one patient from the city of Hidalgo or a thousand patients, that we're addressing each and every one of them with care. And we're going to look into those to make sure that these patients, you know, should have been flown, what was the impact, and, again, focusing with the patient advocacy. It really assigns them a liaison to help process or go through the insurance process. If they don't have insurance, then we work at phys uh, with them to try to make sure that we are, what are the financial, uh, their ability to pay if they don't have that. We run into indigent care everywhere that we go. And we understand that that's a possibility here and you know, kind of hence what started this conversation about bringing air methods to uh, the Rio Grande Valley. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, so again, that, that is my, that, my guarantee with the patient advocacy. We are leading the charge in it. And other air medical providers across the US um, are having a hard time. The membership to some people are very important. Uh, to others, it's about getting in network. And that's kind of what we view as being the future of air medical is getting a network and I we are working diligently to make that happen. United Healthcare is one of the conversations we had this uh, this morning. How many of these agreements do you have in place with local municipalities? City of Far, City of Elsa, uh, City of Alton, uh, uh, some private EMS services in and around the area. Uh, we're still working on other cities, um, other EMS agencies. Uh, we've spoken to Cameron County and um, City of Wessico is another one. So uh, we're, get, we're garnering the support. I think the um, the hesitation is more the agreement. And that's kind of where, again, the agreement is solely to prove to Denver that we have the need and we're going to garner the support. Because, again, we've done this without that and it's, it's, it's failed. Uh, so moving assets around and, and people is, is huge. That's kind of why we're trying to, to do this slowly and garner the support before we move anything. Uh, but, again, those are the agreements that we currently have in place and again, we're just waiting for more and more to sign. Where are you stationed? So you we're looking, again, to try to make it a regional asset. So I, current, oh, I, I previously used to work with Valley Air Care out of Harlingen. And before I moved away, um, it was associated as the Valley Baptist Harlingen Aircraft. Uh, from what I've been told, AEL or AIRVAC is the AIRVAC McAllen, McAllen Medical Aircraft. So trying to figure out what works for them, what worked for Valley Air Care, and what doesn't work. And so we see is putting it in West Laco as the, putting in the Mid-Valley, putting it, um, Again, it, it kind of opens up to, to the entire region. And that's kind of where we're trying to make this a regional asset. Again, the goal primary is to try to, with the, the growth that we're seeing, uh, of hopefully being over 2 million people within the next 10 years, we're, we're really kind of foreseeing two aircraft, but trying to get the first one is kind of the start. So bringing that first, so again, the goal long term would be to get an aircraft in the Cameron Willisey County area and get another aircraft solely pretty much for Hidalgo County and uh, you know, obviously most of Western Star County. Do we have an agreement right now with somebody? Oh, uh, we use the uh, air feedback. Uh, the actual delays that we got in agreement in the uh, What is your recommendation, Mr. Riojas, on this? Uh, may you, uh, Sorry. Well, my recommendation is go over the documentation, the agreement, to see what they're offering. And uh, after that, reviewing, get together with a, a city attorney, and uh, we can take a decision as you, you can take a decision <coughs> on it. But it's, uh, so a lot of departments going, supporting this, uh, this company, but we need to first uh, find out what's the, the agreement, what they, they offering to the city of Hidalgo. Okay. And uh, they're not charging anything to the city of Hidalgo, they're charging to the, yeah, to the patient, patient, for every patient. For every patient, so. And uh, like you see, he says, it's an asset for us. It's an extra uh, helicopter. How many on times the, do, you, do you use this service with the other company, like on a yearly basis? Uh, so far, we've been using just one time. One time? So, yes, sir. Uh, one time per year, one time like No, it's one time, time since I've been here, sir. But I know the other department, they've been using it. Yeah, more, multiple times. We're in Ciro Fidalgo. We're close to the, to the hospital. It's, it's eight miles, so that's why sometimes it's easy, easy to take an ambulance 
then take you to the airport. Unless they have to go to San Antonio or something else, so we can call them and they can be transported directly to them. I'm gonna make a recommendation, Commission. Uh, I would like to give the authorization to the city manager and the um, attorney to get together so, so we can move forward on this. So you can review it and then. Um, we will, and I know that you had, uh, you had some questions that we had brought up already that Chief and I had discussed and I believe they were addressed. Okay. But we will look at all the details and get together with Mr. Longoria. And one of the other questions that we had was that uh, since we have a, uh, a medical emergency service provider, which is uh, Medicare, Medicare right now, and yes, I believe that's gonna continue. Um, you, the, when there is a call, in case of a call, the call chief would come, and I know we discussed it, it would come from Medicare to uh, Air Methods, or would it come from the fire department to it's, Air Methods? It depends. Uh, we can call it directly, okay. directly to them, or if the Medicare is first on scene, they can call it in. They got a mutual agreement with Medicare so far, yeah. so we're working together as a team. Okay, thank you, sir. Do I have a motion to give authorization? Motion, motion by uh, Mr. Duino. Second. Second by Mr. Ramirez, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mayor, uh, on that motion, does, uh, just to clarify, does that mean that if the chief and I, and, and once we review it with the attorney come to terms, we're authorized to you're, sign? You're authorized oh, okay. to sign, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I'll, I'll be here after the meeting if you all have any questions. Please, sir. Thank we appreciate it, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Item number eight, discussion and action on authorization to advertise for sale of five acres being out of lots nine and 10, section two. Hidalgo Canal Company subdivision. Mayor, this is a property that uh, belongs to the city. We've got verification uh, on the uh, background of the of the property uh, that we do. You know, we are the proper uh, owners of this uh, track of land. Uh, this is a property, and is Robert here? We, I saw him stepping out. Yeah, I, I, because he has a, just a site where it's at, and I believe you, uh, just to remind everybody, it is a piece of property that is east of 10th street mm -hmm. uh across from uh, the area of where my via flores via Garza yeah, area flores, is at yeah. mm -hmm. um we are asking for authorization to put this property for sale uh with some conditional uh you know uh, propositions in the in the uh bid process uh we're going to look at the appraised value is to which we already have and then of course uh, we would want to, to stipulate that it's for uh, a bit, it would be, whoever buys would be for business related purposes or an economic development project that would benefit the city and the, uh, the surrounding properties as well. Can At this we, time, staff is asking for recommendation to uh, advertise for bids. How long would it take? What would, it, what, what would be the timeline? You, uh, well, the timeline, the last time that we put properties out, I, I believe it was for 30 days. Mayor. 30 days? Yeah, we allowed uh, bids to come in, sealed bids, 30 days into the finance department. Okay. Mr. Olmstead, is there, uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, have we, uh, how much are these lots? Do, do we have, can we say how much they are? No? Yes, the, comp, the, the uh, I believe okay. what how the appraisal, appraisal district has it for, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, is 110, I believe. 110? Yes, sir. Being that it's not right on the frontage, mm -hmm. está metido, somewhat landlocked. So, so, so you said you, you want to you want to make a recommendation to to stipulate as far as how much as, the bid. Would yeah, be. well, stipulate that that the city will take from let's say from sixty thousand above, from seventy thousand, and we will not receive any bids, or we would not recognize any bids under a certain amount of money based on a on a ratio of what the appraisal district has it for, and then what the city would be willing to take for it. Now, keeping in mind that the city council has the right and authority to reject any of all bids. Is this uh, the property that at one time uh, Lineberger was gonna give out for $1,500, remember? The, the, uh, that, uh, that is the property that, that, that the, the council came back and we rejected uh, that bid, and we decided to do a little bit of research on it and put it back at some day, put it back for, uh, for sale. Okay. Mr. Gonzalez, could we uh, possibly get a um, right of way out of that uh, through the city before we put it up for bids? 
thing is that it's landlocked, it's right? Uh, uh, yes, well, it's somewhat. Cities, I, I don't, cities we are, haven't seen whether it's any. Cities are immune to be yeah. landlocked. Yeah, yeah look, look, at Cities that, are immune yeah. to landlocked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, the, they, yeah. they, they, they can, they can get a. Yeah. Do, do we give it to the, 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 what happens that it, and, and the attorney can verify this, any time that if the city tries to obtain a right of way, it's going to cost us because we're going to have to buy the right of way. Nobody's going to give you a right of way right now unless you're trying to do a subdivision and there's a developer who's doing a subdivision right now. And then under the, the subdivision rules and requirements, we would ask that developer to give up the right of way if he wants his utilities and he wants uh, the, uh, the, uh, the streets paved because then all that is conveyed back to the city. But at this point, since it's a property that is there, uh, we would recommend that let, let's take it, let's see how, what kind of offers we get. We might get some good offers and we might not. And at that time we either accept or we, re, we would reject. Okay. What's your recommendation, bottom line number? No, I don't give that. Or you can't, you can't put, you, yeah, I'll, we'll you, you can't put a price on it. Okay. You mean on, on the stipulation? Right. Yeah, we can talk about that in executive session. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but but right now is the authorization to open the bid. To go out for bids. Okay. To, to advertise for bids. Motion. 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 Okay. With, Motion uh, by if Mr. You were 30 days after we advertise. That's what we did last time. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Trevino, second by Mr. France. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mayor, Council, I'm going to have to be leaving. Go ahead, sir. Uh, we already had prior discussion on the rest of the stuff. All right. Thank you very much. Th thank you very much, Mr. France. Future agenda items. Uh, I do have a couple of ones. Via Garza Flores update, even if it's, you know. Presentation. Presentation or, or okay. where are we at with that and, and, yes. and how long is it gonna take at we'll least to start cutting the, the trees, the grass? We, we will call uh, Mr. Heffler tomorrow morning and uh, ask him to come by on Thursday to give you a presentation on that for the special call meeting. And, and, and come up with a possible a groundbreaking date okay as well as the, we're getting uh, very close to that we will we'll get a good indicator tomorrow on that on a good groundbreaking uh, so we can have a celebration of a new park out there I would like to see where we are we at with our conversation with the judge I did speak with a judge uh, last week and mm -hmm. they're ready to come and make a presentation to the council on the different options that you all had discussed with yeah. him and me I would like to start already as soon as possible. So let's uh, let's bring him in and, and uh, present the options. So I'll be getting together with him and with Mr. Uh, Garza from Lineberger uh, this week, and then uh, I'll bring that up if they're ready for for this Thursday or if not for the next meeting. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we're having a, sp a special call meeting on Thursday. And items on the agenda will be the uh, budget amendments, the, uh, the effective tax rate for 2018-2019, the uh, proposed budget for 2018-2019, uh, discussion and possible action on the uh, Madero proposed bridge on the new uh, allocations. And that's what I have for right now. Can we have the meeting at 5.30 or what was the, you, was the, the six? The, what you had suggested last time was at 5.30. Okay. Can the commission make it at 5.30 on Thursday real quick? This Thursday or next week? This Thursday. Add to, to, it, that would be the final, the final meeting for the budget? That will be what we will be submitting to the county for publication. That is correct. Um, if you have not, I think I've been asking for it, but uh, if you have not uh, created a small budget, for lights, water, pavement of certain streets, please do so. I mean, just try to get. Uh, yes, we have we have some different? we okay. have some uh, some items and some uh, included in there. Okay, great. Are we getting ready for the uh, Halloween uh, festivities? Are we gonna have anything? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, I don't see that. You want to dress? You want to address like something? Yeah, Who's normally take normally the, uh, the pump houses are very. Uh, the Sanchez, you're going to be in charge of the. HEDC and the library haunted house. and all of the uh, staff. Okay. Yes, ma'am. When are you meeting? So that way, if, if you have time, so Mr. Trevino can go to the meeting and just. Can you let him know to, just to. Maybe he has some. some yeah, we'll be having a. We normally have a staff meeting after. Our meetings, we're not going to be able to have one tomorrow because I'm meeting with some folks that are coming in from out of town on a realtor's tour. 
And then on uh, Wednesday, I'm meeting with a state director from uh, USDA. So we'll probably be having our staff meeting on Thursday. And uh, all the departments are expected to participate in the Hunted House. Are we looking to um, see something different at the Pump House? Or sorry? Are we looking to see something different at the Pump House? Are we going to have a concert or something? Banda music? We have Pandora. Yes, one of, the, one of the things we want to do a little bit different this year that we were talking together with Mr. Charlie over here is, uh, like Mr. Julian said, every department is going to participate. Uh, we want to try to market or sell it as a, a safe environment for the children. I know those of you that do have children have gone. As they're right now, if you go into the colonias or if you go into Vallarta, there's a lot of cars because everybody has their car. You got su niño, and so what we want to do is we want to see if we can try to coordinate with the police department to close off the street where Crepari starts, and have the different departments each set up a booth, and oh, that nice. way you know it's a safe environment for your children. And you're not worried about your child being run over by a car or anything like that. And we'll have maybe about 20 stations where the children can go, and we'll draw a little map so that they can go and get candy. And uh, we want to market it as a safe uh, and family-friendly location. That's nice. Yeah, we have a lot of visitors from Reynosa. I think it would be nice for us to. <laughs> one, one of the things I'm talking to Selene about is maybe we can start advertising more on the south side of our border. I know it's the, uh, I don't know if we've done it in the past, but I know when I go over there, I do see a lot of businesses that advertise over there. So I don't know if we, that's something we can venture into, but that's a good idea. Any parties, any dress up parties? Uh, we, will, uh, we are talking about maybe a competition. So, so if you want to compete. Mayor? I'm all for it. El Valiente. I'm all for it. We also have a parade. Ah, uh, we're going to have a parade. We have a parade for nice. Dia de los Muertos. Oh, great. So the haunted house is going to be for, for more than one day? Yes. Yeah. Four days. Oh, great. 27, 28, and then we'll go to the 31st. Kentucky Parade. That, that's I, I think on Thursday we can show the, we're still like, what movie are we, we going to show every day? And then, um, oh, there's a lot of. I've gotten very, every year, man. It's, it, they do a real good job. Yeah, I like that. I like that uh, on, on the parade. And, 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 and the help of Charlie, you know, and Raul. I don't know if it's a good idea, but think about it. Uh, to incorporate, not a theme, but maybe something with Frida Kahlo during the, the Dia de los Muertos. We're thinking about Dia de los Muertos de Yeah, great. See? We're, we're interconnected. Because uh, that attracts a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, is there a special connect? That's Frida? Frida Kahlo. Yeah. Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera, Diego yes. Rivera. I can yeah. dress up as Diego Rivera. I can be Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. Now, um, you know, we, we, I, I like to hear that. that. That's awesome. Then we have the, the breast cancer walk as well. Correct. October 21st. October 21st, Sunday, we already uh, had our first initial meetings with Ms. Ayala, and we're working on that. We're going to schedule a second meeting this week. And uh, Who's participating in those events? Like, are we as a city group? Uh, we, we have a like a group that participates. This is a city-sponsored event, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, we so invite we'll the whole invite community. community. Camp, everybody's we'll invite so everybody's welcome to come yes, over sir. and watch. Yes, Everybody's right. welcome to come and participate <laughs> in the walk. Some run it, some jog it, and some uh, bring their pets and animals that jog and walk with them. It's, it's a real neat event. Is Ramon Ayala walking that day? Check it out. Call him. I think he's working. <laughs> he's going yeah, to be walking. I don't know if we're going to if we're going to make him wear a pink shirt or not. But at what time? We'll try. Uh, the events, uh, the festivities start at eight, and we usually get to walking around nine, nine thirty. Eight to twelve. I guess we're going to Yeah, we'll be done. We'll be done by then. <laughs> you want to just uh, uh, is Selene here? Yes, Selene. Selene. Uh, we have the September just talk the 30th. Just a little bit about Mayor. I wonder for Celente to just uh, give an overview on where we're at with the. Uh, yes, he says this. Not the, the, the well, the celebration of the Los Dias Festivos. Celente, you wanna just 
give a briefing on the uh, los días los festivos Se yes. September the 30th. Fiestas yeah. patrias. Um, Fiestas patrias. Right, uh, it's going to be from I believe from eight to four o'clock. They're going to have um, soccer games for the for the little kids. So I'll be going on through from eight to four. Um, inside the arena. Inside the arena. Oh, nice. They do need a ticket, uh, and that also is good for their uh, their ticket to see the soccer. Game. Okay. And then the soccer game starts at six o'clock. And outside activities start from from well, eight to five. Pesado. What time? Pesado. I believe I don't have the lineup yet, but I'm assuming it would be at five. At four o'clock, four o'clock. Four o'clock. At four o'clock? At three o'clock. Oh, at three. But is okay. I thought so they that were going to be later, Mayor, because you had asked me. I thought yeah. it was going to be later in the evening, but no, they, they have them earlier. Yeah. So let, let's just start promoting that, because a lot of people think that it's after seven o'clock. No, and yeah, uh, I know right now um, the marketing director is uh, promoting that right now, so uh, <coughs> we'll make it clear. All right. So they're going to be singing from three to five? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, more than an hour. That's good. That's on September, September the 30th. September the 30th, okay. on a Sunday outside of the grounds. Great. Any, any other questions? Mayor, the, uh, uh, we have a copy of the Strategic Technology Plan. I know the Commissioner Ramirez had yes, been uh, answered that. for this. Commissioner, we're going to ask you to review this. If there's any suggestions or recommendations that you want to insert in here, let us know so that we can revise it. Well, thank, thank you. you. Mayor and Ms. Rosales, uh, I have to excuse myself as well. I got some business conducting. Yeah, go ahead, sir. But I want to take the opportunity also to thank uh, Freddie, uh, Mr. Rojas, and everybody else that participated at the um, with the uh, thunderstorm, you know, event. Uh, I think everything uh, went well, really smooth. Everything on time, you know, the calls, the meetings that we had in the school. I think everything went really, went really well. So, thank you guys for for being there for us. Huh, yeah, that was a very good point. This time around, I, I really felt that we were really very, prepared. very prepared for for the storm. So I know you were eager water. to use the pumps. Thank God we didn't have Mayor, to we use were them, e we were <laughs> eager to for the rain to go around us, but we were ready for it if it would have come. And I do want uh, to to uh, commend and echo. Uh, is the commissioner's uh, comments, uh, Lieutenant Ortega, our EOC director, yes. and all of the staff that we, uh, they planned for it. We had meetings, everything was real diligent. We did some mock uh, mock exercises and uh, we were ready for it. Yeah, it seemed that everybody was really prepared, really knew what they were gonna do, you know, um, next step and third step and, yeah. you know, plan B, B to Z. So uh, thank you guys. Freddie, you did a really good job. Thank you for helping us. I'm with the school and everything. So and let's just you. continue with the, the just keep it up. with the drainage, Mr. Puentes. Continue cleaning. We're going to continue the project, yeah. Mayor. And we've been we, I've met with our project engineer on that last week also. Uh, some of the staff and I met with him so that they can continue. He's going to come back with a report. Um, right now, it seems that there there might be some funds becoming available. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen now with the devastation in in uh, Los Carolinas, right? Uh, that area was hit pretty bad, not so much with the wind, but with water damage, and they're continuing to get hit as we're speaking. But, um, and, and we're not expecting anything from FEMA, but uh, some of the eight other funding agencies uh, that we're gonna be working with. I believe Hidalgo County Drainage District, number one, is planning, this is the talks, uh, they're planning on doing a recommendation on the bond issuance for the county. And if they're gonna do that, and our citizens are still going to be uh, expected to pay a, a small tax on that. We want to make sure that our area is not left out. Yeah. No. Great. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. No. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. City manager report. That concludes my, my report, Mayor. Yes, okay. I need a motion to go into closed session. Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Ramirez, second by Ms. Ayala. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I need a motion to come back to open session. Motion. Motion by uh, Mr. Ramirez, second by Mr. Sanchez. Motion carries. You wanna read the motion, Mr. I'm sorry, the um, item? Yes, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tip, members of the City Council. Uh, the motion on item C will be that uh, staff authorization to negotiate the uh, lease agreement with the pavilion, Los Tigres, 
for three uh, three month trial period from here till the end of the year. All right. I need a motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Ramirez, second by Ms. Ayala. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. I need a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Motion by Mr. Ramirez, second by Ms. Ayala. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you.